I'm working further on my 8 watt or 5 watt audio amplifier. Found out that it has to work on 40 volts. Found out that I have to cool the transistor very properly, the 2N3055. But this video is about crossover distortion. Um, and that's a well known phenomenon when you um, study uh, the literature about class B amplifiers. In a class B amplifier um, there's one transistor here, the NPN transistor and a transistor here, the PMP transistor and they both take one part of the sine wave signal. This is the signal and this part, the positive part, is amplified by the NPN transistor, the negative part by the PMP. But of course there is a, a kind of zone here at the zero uh, where the PMP transistor or the NPN transistor has to take over the signal. And when, when that does not work properly you can see this. I hope it's visible. Uh, I also have a disturbing signal somewhere coming from somewhere, I don't know. But here you see a kind of burst. And that's the crossover moment when one transistor takes over the other part. And to avoid that you can use um, uh, diodes. So every transistor here has to get a kind of forward voltage and for a silicon transistor that is in this range 0.7 up to 0.8. So when I connect here two diodes there is no crossover distortion any longer. By the way this is the Darlington driver that's here this is the first stage, first transistor from the Darlington. This is the second transistor. I set the working point with this potentiometer. I'm going to upload the circuit on to YouTube when all works properly. And um, let me show uh, what happens when we connect the two diodes. They are here. These two diodes. Uh, give both transistors, the PMP and the NPN, a forward voltage that makes that these transistors switch properly through the zero point from the sine wave signal or the sine wave signals. When it's an audio it's of course a complex mixture of all kinds of um, frequencies, sine wave frequencies. Again, put um, power to the circuit. Here you see the distortion caused by the not properly um, connected transistors. And now we have in function the two diodes. And you can see that the crossover distortion is completely gone. So this is no crossover distortion any longer and we have a complete, complete pure undistorted signal. So that's all there was to tell about this phenomenon. When you do experiments uh, there are circuits where both uh, base connections are connected directly by a wire. When that doesn't work properly and you hear distortion or see distortion on the scope, try to use two diodes. And the amount of diodes, how much you need, depends on the type of transistor 
the germanium transistors don't need so much forward voltage, but silicon transistors need more forward voltage. So um, that's why you have to use here also silicon diodes. And when you see still distortion, add a, a, another diode here in a row. Or um, add a germanium diode in combination with two silicon diodes or one silicon diode to um, give this circuit a very precise uh, moment to switch. And when you there's a Darlington here, not one transistor but a Darlington, you need even more diodes in this row. And when you study schematics on the internet or in books, you'll always find here in class B amplifiers uh, a few diodes or a semi zener diode made by a transistor and the potentiometer. But anyway, this is all that there was to tell. Thank you. Wish you luck.